Yes. Organized by Savita School of Engineering. I am very glad to appreciate the efforts taken by Department of Mechanical Engineering, Automobile Engineering and uh, Agricultural Engineering for this very good initiative. And this topic also covers wide range of this mechanical engineering. In this conference, I wish to give some basic information about what is the need for design and simulation in thermal systems and how to make simulation of thermal systems, the need and how to make simulations. So in this aspect, I wish to give few information to the audience. So it's a, about the simulation of thermal systems. Thermal, okay, as a whole mechanical engineering, if you see, there are three major divisions. It's a thermal engineering, design engineering, and manufacturing engineering. This conference is covering the entire three divisions. Always in the earlier days, whenever any mechanical engineers, if they say design means, it's one part of design. How to design means structural design only will come to our mind. Structural in the sense, the, safe, the safety aspects and strength, these two only will come to our mind. But that is very important for the design of any mechanical components required for any applications. Mechanical is mechanical design is useful for any engineering application. Any engineering. Yeah, I request all the participants to mute your system. Yes. So, so design normally design. If you think it is strength aspect and safety aspects. But in thermal design means thermal design. Okay, thermally, okay, material should withstand. That is one aspect. But otherwise, thermal designs normally involves flow heat transfer aspects. Flow heat transfer aspects. When you design properly, you can reduce the operational cost of the system. Operational cost of the system. Suppose if you design engineering point of view, initially, whenever any engineering, they think about design means, okay, it should withstand, it should withstand. And also the cost effectiveness, cost effectiveness also you can see. So cost effectiveness for manufacturing, when you start thinking, okay, it should have the minimum, if you take the material more than the requirement will happen, the in initial investment will be very high. Suppose if you design any sub one table you design, it has some four legs. So you know what all the what all the things you are going to keep on the table. So if suddenly one fine day you may keep heavy one heavy equipment or something on the table. So that leg should be with the, should be capable of withstanding that uh, load which you keep on the table, right? So you should expect what maximum load which may come on the table. Based on that, you should design the legs and all the structural parts. Everything you have to design. Okay, then manufacturing is a different part. So when you design this, if you Days there was no provision to exactly calculate what is the stress in each and every part of the structure. Each and every part of the structure, you are, you are not able to calculate the stress. But now, with the modern analysis, particularly some software is available, you are able to analyze, you are able to analyze what is the stress at each and every part of the that structure so that you know you know what is the leg structure leg thickness everything you need to design so what maximum load it can withstand 
okay so if if you you do not have the proper design you will over design or if it is if it is uh, the design is not sufficient means it will fail if it is over design means it is expensive right if it is over design it is unnecessarily it is expensive if the design that structure that leg, leg thickness is not sufficient means it may fail so all these aspects only we have covered during the earlier days when design of any mechanical equipment for any application so still there was not uh, much knowledge means accurately accurate design is was not possible so we all the mechanical engineers they have used some analytical uh, that is expressions which were derived from the equations equations okay i will come to what is that equations okay now now first i am telling what is the difference in designing mechanical design and thermal design first i wa i want to ensure that to the audience what is the very much what is the important role in thermal design what is the important role in structural design all these days structural design was assumed as uh, uh, considered as a, an important component because everybody wants initial expenditure very less they have to they try to reduce the initial investment to the maximum level so for which unnecessary over design will make it very expensive but in the recent days in many of the equipments many of the equipments whether it is uh, automobile automobile or some construction of houses everywhere if you see the initial investment seems to be very less because of the advancement in engineering components and material inventions the initial investment became very less so once the initial investment becomes less okay that design part you need not concentrate much in the structural stability part and other things you even you over design also will not make much additional investment but still one should make attention to reduce the initial investment as much as possible by doing proper analysis yeah please unmute your uh, mute your systems all the uh, participants okay so now thermal system what thermal design what is the advantage so by doing thermal and flow design thermal and flow design you can reduce the operational cost suppose in an uh, engine in an automobile car if you are able to design the proper that is uh, uh, what is that flow without any uh, friction frictional effect should be very much less the fluid flow if it is very uh, properly designed the resistance for the flow will be reduced right resistance for the flow then the for a given amount of fuel you use the kilometer you can run the vehicle will be high so that means operationally it is inexpensive now so nowadays most of the equipments operational cost is very very important so in order to reduce the operational cost thermal design and flow design to be proper thermal and flow design to be proper okay now you understood what is the there are many things in the mechanical part uh, design is an important aspect and uh, now how to design using very easiest way using software okay in olden days there was no computer there was no computer so design means what we need to know the all the fundamental formula and from the fundamental formula analytical expressions were uh, derived using that and uh, analytical expressions the engineers designed this uh, their system whatever they want to design whatever they want to design they used the analytical formula but recently okay some 35 or 40 years ago not even 40 19s after 1970s 80s only the computer era has come after that all design design procedures were changed design procedures were changed now everything computer can understand what is to be done but our human as an engineer we need to make the computer to understand your question if you are able to make the computer to understand your question then all engineers knowledge is 
embedded in the computer software so that it will give the result so engineer's job nowadays is to understand the problem correctly and give the question to the computer to understand 100% accurately if you make mistakes in defining your question defining your statement of the problem to the computer wrongly it cannot understand so your job as an engineer nowadays understanding the question is very very important understanding the question is very very important if you are uh, uh, making mistakes in uh, defining the problem to the computer the computer will take a wrong question and it will give wrong answer understood so now you understood what is uh, how to do design in the modern era so you need to understand the problem exactly that is what engineer's job now any mechanical engineer automobile engineer agricultural engineer anybody whoever it may be so your job is to understand the problem correctly understanding is very very essential understanding the problem is very very essential so okay you understood now you understood the physics of the problem now the physics you should know how to give as an input to the computer as a mathematical equations so now i am coming to that part now you understood what is the need for that uh, system simulation or analysis through computer analysis through computer okay now now i i want to inform you any physical phenomena happening in this world any physical phenomena whatever it may be it may be fluid flow or heat transfer or anything or it's a, it will be something if it is any action taking place that you can model using mathematical equations right any any physical phenomena happening in this world can be modeled using mathematical equations so if you are able to convert physics into mathematical model then mathematicians job to give the answer how to solve that how to solve that but in reality any physical problem okay suppose if you want to get the answer normally all some uh, some decades ago immediately the scientists have done experiments lot of experiments and under this uh, real conditions what is the final answer based on that result by doing repeated experiments they have made some correlations also they have made some correlations also these correlation for example in heat transfer in fluid mechanics there are so many correlations based on reynolds number this uh, nusselt's number uh, so many dimensionless number they evolved and uh, based on that or oh, anything to, to want to calculate the frictional uh, friction factor during the flow or uh, during the heat transfer what is the heat transfer coefficient for all these things they have evolved a lot of correlations under different scenario under different geometrical conditions under different flow conditions they have evolved correlations based on the experiments because those days any complicated scenarios you cannot modeling is easy but solution for that complicated equation is was very difficult so they have conducted experiments all these days experiments all these days okay so now computer you have computer work well, any kind of complex problems can be given as input to the uh, you can ask the computer to do it will solve it will get can solve so using if you are able to make the physics into mathematical model now any complicated problem can be solved very easily in the last for the line during the last three decades how to do it if you know then lot of engineers knowledge you will get expert scientist knowledge also you can make use of for your uh, uh, real re requirement you need not know all the fundamentals all the domain knowledge you need not have everything because it's very difficult over the period one one can learn but if you know the techniques how to use others knowledge using computers then you are a powerful engineer for any industry powerful industry powerful person for any industry that how it is possible that how it is possible any physical phenomena happening in this world can be modeled using mathematical equations okay now 
physical experiments conducting physical experiments there are some drawbacks in the sense it is expensive it is time consuming and uh, you 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 make some prototype but you when you do it in the real time it is very very huge size so sometimes there may be some difference in the prototype and the real time scenario so real time scenario you cannot some conduct some experiments really so many experiments for different parameters you cannot do that so obviously the simulation design using simulation simulation in the sense repeated runs using computer repeated runs using computer so that is very essential to make design very faster very faster in the in the uh, the near future as well in the earlier years people started using this aggressively for every applications you can see some 20 years ago uh, bringing one new model in automobile was very difficult in the sense it will take 2 to 3 years but now every model they can make once in 2 years they can the, all the automobile companies are releasing new new models because they are not doing real experiments they do the, all the experiments in the computer itself computer itself so numerical simulation became powerful solution for design numerical simulation became a powerful solution for any design of any equipments design of any equipments numerical solution became a powerful solution okay in addition now i now i am going to tell about two different things what are all the softwares available for engineers particularly mechanical automobile engineers what are all the different kind of softwares codes available that you should make use of so that any complicated systems can be designed and you can become a powerful engineer and you can contribute to the company wherever you are working wherever you are working so before going for the component wise simulation i would also like to inform you about what is system simulation component simulation so what is component simulation and system simulation a system may be consists of several components am i right a system may consists of several components each component separately in depth you may have to sometimes you may have to simulate each component separately that to optimize the performance to optimize the performance but sometimes your job is not to optimize the performance of each each and every component as a whole the system performance you need to enhance so there are two different kinds of softwares available one is for system simulation one is for the each and every component performance enhancement how it is possible for which each and every component you have to simulate separately so normally system simulation means you should know this is the information you need to know what are this powerpoint i have what is system simulation system simulation system simulation it's a basic methodology of simulating the performance of a thermal or any system using the known performance characteristics of the components so you know the each and every component characteristics separately so that can be modeled as an individual equations so these individual equations will come as a part of one block so each block you should connect and make it as a system so now one information information flow diagram is required for a system simulation suppose in a, any a power plant simulation power plant consists of four major components boiler turbine condenser and one pump so this boiler how it works separately you should write all the equations related to boiler in one block then turbine all the common equations related to the turbine you should write it in one block similarly condenser you should write it in one, one block pump you have to write all the equations related to the pump you have to so information some information given to the boiler if you give the output it knows how to calculate within this block diagram it will calculate the block and it will give the output it will give the output so that output will become the input for the next block next block so the, understood this kind of simulation is called system simulation 
now you can also optimize what what is the need for simulation finally to optimize the performance of the system so how you can optimize the performance of the system so by okay now there may be various operational parameters that parameters the range of operational values may vary so what range of values you need to operate everything you will you can find so that the system total system is operational under optimized conditions understood so now you understood what is system simulation okay system there are many softwares available in the uh, available in the commercial uh, market for system simulation for power plant system simulation there are some separate system simulation software available for air conditioning system simulation there are separate softwares available for cooling of electronic equipments separate systems uh, system softwares available nowadays very popular softwares is all for hvac application heating ventilation air conditioning for this is because in any country 40 percentage of the energy utilized in any country is utilized in building sector so their operational cost if you are able to reduce that is very large energy saving so there are lots of system simulation hvac system simulation heating ventilation and air conditioning that system simulation softwares are available so system you know now you understood system consists of several components all the components are made as a one block wherein lot of equations are embedded so if you give the information as a input to the block using that equation it will solve and it will give us output that output will be given as input for the next uh, component where this uh, real uh, heat transfer fluid or whatever it is going to the next component so now you understood what is system simulation there are many softwares so if you are a system engineer going to work for any kind of system whether it is for any agricultural system also some tractor you are using so it's a tractor as a whole as a system it has so many component uh, lubrication system cooling system driving system so all this system is separately you can analyze how to optimize how to by improve the performance of the tractor so that the energy required for the operation will be lesser energy required for the operation will be lesser understood so the system simulation now you understood now component wise simulation is also every component has to work in an efficient way for which in a system level common in a system level simulation normally what is that this uh, equations this normal equations which are derived by uh, solving this uh, partial differential equation in an analytical expressions are given in each block diagram normally most of the softwares nowadays there are softwares available internally in each block also can be separately solved using a uh, high end software like uh, fluent software uh, ansys software each and every component that also possible but separately how to optimize the component how to optimize the system component operation that for which there are separate softwares available so now okay now i am coming to component wise simulation means what you need to do. okay for which a thermal design for thermal simulation computational fluid dynamics is the ultimate solution computational fluid dynamics okay so it is though it is called fluid dynamics it is solves heat transfer and the thermal problems also computational fluid dynamics the subject initially the named as computational fluid flow for the fluid flow it is solved but it solves flow and heat transfer all thermal related problems also you can solve using computational fluid dynamics analysis software so now now you understood what is system simulation system simulation can be for structural side or stability side or anything it may be for that is design engineers they do that is that means design engineers means normally uh, this uh, machine design machine design means uh, they they are uh, Uh, objective is towards stability and structural strength strength aspects but now thermal design engineers 
they what they do they they analyze flow and heat transfer and thermal aspects with that normally okay thermal aspects is also useful to avoid some thermal stresses to avoid some thermal stresses to common and failure due to thermal stresses also has to be accounted that is also uh, life li life analysis as well the strength analysis using thermal stress that is also one part but major part is to reduce the operational cost of the systems by analyzing the flow and the thermal analysis for example you can for uh, i will before i enter into the computational fluid dynamics concepts before i explain for example one pump it's an operation the pump mechanical design engineers they operate the inner uh, inner part everything so that the initial investment they reduce you know the pump any any anything which is operated using electrical motors electrical motors pump is operated by electrical motor okay here most of the engineering equipment if you see if it is dynamic it is driven by some electrical motor electrical motor so you know the motor in any any motor if it's a small size to the higher size higher capacity the life cycle cost if you see one only 1 to 2% is the initial investment cost most of the uh, motors which are being used in the uh, industrial applications their lifetime cost if you see the 98 percentage is the operational cost 2% only it is initial investment cost the pump may be something around some 50000 rupees over a period of 20 years it, life may come for some 20 years over a period of 20 years you would have spent nearly 50000 into some nearly 19 times you would have spent so that that cost is very important so for which you need to design how efficiently you need to allow the fluid to flow over these blades right then only the the frictional effect will be less so that your operational cost will be very less so operational cost reduction is very very important in nowadays because every engineering systems nowadays they want to reduce the operational cost even in even you can see nowadays there are many construct civil engineering also a lot of buildings have come now you, you know many of the houses a monthly maintenance charge is coming around some 6000 rupees because there are lots of things they are operating so this operational cost if you are able to reduce through using your uh, Uh, system analysis of fluid flow and heat transfer analysis means your operational cost will be reduced operational cost will be reduced so every applications mechanical applications is very huge and the civil engineering application agricultural any electronic cooling electronics also some uh, systems because all electronic miniaturization is possible with the advancement in heat transfer only so if you are able to all thermal all electronics equipments also embedded with some heat sink the heat sink design if it is proper the operational cost will be less operational cost will be less so every engineering application is related to heat thermal thermal design aspects okay now you understood the importance of thermal design and what you understood what is what is uh, system simulation and the component wise simulations you need to understand the understand how this in this particular component how the flow and the heat transfer taking place that physics if you are able to model using a mathematical equation then mathematicians have given all all solution methodology how to solve any kind of mathematical equations any kind of mathematical equations now can be solved you need not worry about whatever you have studied uh, to solve uh, very simple equations like uh, 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 heat equation one dimensional parabolic equation hyperbolic equation elliptic equations that are one dimensional equation you can solve and bring some analytical solution but real time problems are complicated three dimensional flow problem with the complex boundary conditions complex boundary conditions so to solve that you need to now powerful computer powerful computers you know the, during the period 1965 70 periods that that uh, decade
mathematicians they found mathematicians also what is their part of research you know when they whenever they do research they take some engineering problem and they convert that into some mathematical equations then they will try to give solution for that that is what most, most of the mathematicians research most of the mathematicians okay in mathematical aspects itself one of the research but most of the mathematicians they take some engineering problem as their problem and then they model and how to uh, make some uh, reduce their assumptions whether it is possible to give some analytical solutions for that okay during the period of uh, this 1960s they gave, they are, the mathematicians they understood any partial differential equations can be discretized into algebraic equations discretization concept has come some 50 years ago so discretization means it's a converting partial differential equation or a differential equation into algebraic equations so if you are able to convert partial differential equation into algebraic equations then solving algebraic equation simultaneously it's an easy job okay but manually you can solve some 10 equations but computers can solve even lakhs and millions of equation simultaneously within no matter of few seconds within matter of few seconds computer can solve then this uh, during the period 1970s they understood the power of the power of discretization the discretization methods were given by some mathematicians but that uh, discretization concepts became powerful after the advent of computers after the advent of computers this computer era people started using computer and uh, the computer also became powerful computer as it becomes more and more powerful solving more number of equations were became very easy so what this uh, then the engineers they started using the computers for their design aspects solving mathematical aspects now you should know any physics happening in this world can be modeled using mathematical equations so once you once you convert into mathematical equations very complex equation you need not make any assumptions any complex equation also can be discretized into algebraic equations so that algebraic equations now computers are available to solve to give the solutions so what is discretization so differential equation okay one more one more aspect you should understand here when you convert a physical phenomena into mathematical equation that dependent variable on the physics should have should have continuity that means the variation of that dependent variable should vary continuously with the respect to dependent variable which influence that dependent parameter suppose heat is flowing temperature is the uh, dependent variable the space x y z and the time may be independent variable so if you write the heat equation d square t by d x square d t t the temperature should be continuous with respect to space and time okay x the space x y z or r theta uh, z or uh, time or independent variable independent variable so now to model this the dependent variable continuity should be there but still there are procedures evolved even if there is a discontinuity in the dependent variable most of the physical system continuity will not be there but even there is a discrete vari variation that means any sharp change in suppose for example water is flowing water flowing at a constant velocity at a uniform flow then you can model continuity will be there but normally water in a river flow or water wherever it flows there will be some chaos some turbulence will be there but the turbulence part that chaotic part how to capture separately and integrate with the continuum equation so that totally it becomes the model mathematical model for the given physics so there are ways to counter that are given as physical model in the softwares so any discontinuum discontinuity there in the physics also can be captured using physical model so that any physics can be converted into mathematical model so if you convert mathematical model mathematical equations means partial differential equation then you can convert into algebraic equations using discretization technique that is what so in the period between 
okay the before the before that okay in the period between 1960s and 1970s there are lots of methods evolved in the numerical methods numerical systems how to bring these in the software see this uh, this uh, numerical models in the software so 1960s and 70s only these things were evolved so now you understood how these computer softwares were evolved during the last uh, uh, 50 years you can say this mathematical discretization after the invention of computers they uh, they brought the concept of discretization and also some various powerful algorithms were developed between 1960s and 1970s how to teach the computer to understand this physical this mathematical equation so that it can solve on in on its own okay now so now what the engineers need to know the basic fundamentals about fluid dynamics numerical methods and heat transfer so all this here the all this uh, domain knowledge if you have aerospace part the knowledge you need is to understand the problem that's all you need not understand everything some scientists were few of the scientists have done their uh, have spent their whole life to understand the physics and how to make the computer to understand these all these concepts were already done now if you as an engineer if you know it's enough if you know how to use this developed software understand the question and solve your problem 99 percentage of the engineers requirement is only this still advanced development require means one or two percent people who are involved in uh, research level they do that job so most of the industrial requirement is the software which were developed by lot of brains lot of intelligent brains during the last three decades now the present engineers should know how to make use of that knowledge for your design requirement make use of that knowledge for your design requirement understood so now the present day engineers saying only the book knowledge is not sufficient then you are no way useful for the present industries present day industries you need to understand how to solve this problem using this software what knowledge this uh, softwares have what knowledge how we do doing how we this doing you need not know but what kind of problem this software can solve and how to give the input to the software that alone if you know you can do wonders you can contribute lot to the industry you can give, make the industry to benefit a lot so that you, you are a useful engineer for any industry so experimental kind of work is required to some extent because any software when you do you do not know because there are lots of things involved when you try to do it do the simulation using software first you should verify the your answer so for which now it is still the experimental things are required because there are lots of steps involved in the analytical or experimental computational work that uh, that uh, that steps if even if you make any mistake in the defining the problem itself if you make mistake if you don't understand the problem correctly there itself some mistakes may be there you do not know the correct uh, understanding of the problem then how you can make the computer to understand definitely there itself mistake starts sometimes in the step uh, the instruction whatever you give to the computer if there is a mistake also then there is a problem so all these things can be verified using some simple experiment and a simple analysis then you can further complicate your analysis procedure so that any complicated system also you can solve so now this is the various steps uh, which were evolved during 1960s and 1970s and 80s 80s to 90s these were made as different softwares for every flow and heat transfer analysis of each and every component these are the various softwares which were evolved during this period and now this powerful softwares fluent and cfx were procured by that is uh, taken over by this ansys company which were the, the ansys company initially were very powerful for structural and strength analysis but they understood strength analysis and this uh, thermal analysis heat fluid flow and heat transfer analysis also has to be interlinked these people the fluent and cfx people they became powerful so they purchased the software and now it is integrated and for any thermal and strength analysis both now this ansys software became powerful like not only ansys like that several other software comes all there is a big very good software 
there are different softwares. We should not point out only one software. There are different softwares to analyze any mechanical system. Strength analysis as well. This uh, strength analysis and uh, flow and the thermal analysis. So I am I am going to give another only ten minutes. Uh, deliver some ten minutes. How to model this? How to model any component? Initially, I told you how to make system simulation. And each system has in every blocks there is a one component. That component, if you want to optimize, then you should come here. Okay, there are system simulation software. These are component wise uh, optimization. If you want, then you should come to this kind of software. So this kind of software requires fundamental knowledge about fluid flow, heat transfer, and the numerical methods. Okay, numerical methods also you need to understand what this computer is doing. Otherwise, it is difficult to, you do not know what is to be, what, how you can give the instruction to the computer. But in-depth numerical method is not required because the software is already inbuilt with all these algorithms. Software is already inbuilt with all these algorithms. So as an engineer, you should know what is what. What is what in the fluid mechanics, heat transfer and the numerical methods and some domain knowledge about what, if you are an automobile engineer, the, about the automobile, you should have full entire knowledge. Then you can play with the software and you can get, get optimum design for anything. Anything within this component wise also and as a system wise also you can get it. Okay, now any component wise, if you want to optimize through, through simulation procedure, through numerical simulation procedure, then what, what are the steps to be followed? Define the modeling goals. So that is what I told you. You understand the physics of the problem. Statement of the problem should be very perfect. Otherwise, it is very, very difficult to make the computer to understand. So define the modeling goals. So what is the objective of the problem? Then you understand the question very thoroughly. Okay, keep the statement of the problem very perfect. Then create the model geometry and grid. How do you make the computer to understand the problem? So you should draw the model, the real time physical model, whatever you want to design that has to be modeled using solid modeling software. So nowadays solid modeling softwares like CATIA, ProE, these softwares are very essential and it's a essential compulsory requirement for all engineers, particularly mechanical, civil, automobile related engineers. Without this, you cannot do anything. It's a heart of the system. So modeling, if you are able to model perfectly with this model, you can go for strength analysis, flow analysis. Also, you can give this model for manufacturing also. If you are able to give this model in a computer using CNC machine or some uh, now advanced machines nowadays available, 3D, uh, 3D machines. So you can give the instruction to the computer to manufacture that also. So for which what is required? Model, solid model is required. So in the solid model, if you are able to draw the real component in the computer, now the computer knows what is the component to be analyzed. Now set up the solver and the physical models. Now you should give the instructions like all the boundary conditions, all the boundary conditions and the in initial conditions, and uh, inlet conditions and also what kind of solver to be used to solve that equation also you have to give the instructions. So when you give this instruction to the solid model which you have developed, the model now it became the life you have you have given life to the uh, model, it's a dead model. Now the computer understood can understand what is the mathematical equation to be employed to solve that uh, your requirement. Understood. In the th after the third step, so solid after the solid model, it's a dead thing. It doesn't know what what uh, question you are going to give. If the computer doesn't know. But after the physical model, when you give the instructions, how to give the instruction by your very good understanding about the physical problem, you should give the instructions. So when you give the instruction, the computer model can understand the physics of the problem thoroughly. So when the physics of the problem, it is understood, it is ready to solve it 
because all other instructions is already inbuilt now the physics in the computer understood what is the definition of the problem statement of the problem now if you ask to computer ask the computer to compute use you execute means it will start solving the problem and uh, during the process you can also monitor every step you can monitor how how it is proceeding so when you monitor in the sometimes you will know you have done some mistake and it is going in a wrong path so you you need not wait till the solution get converged so you can ask the you can stop the uh, run procedure and you can correct wherever the mistake could be so you should you, there you should apply your mind because you you have some rough idea of what kind of answer instead of getting 10 cm final answer if you get uh, some 10 meter means you know some wrong mistake you have done understood so you should have an idea of what is the final answer for which expertise opinion is required so how you will decide whether the answer is wrong whatever instruction if you give the computer the, this, this is a black box only black box black box will come give some solution but whether it is in the right uh, whether it is right or not experts only can take decision okay it is it is uh, the the value seems to be correct for the given requirement so initially before you uh, get the expertise you can give the solution to the your professor or some company experts whether it is correct or not you can check after some three or four problems uh, projects you have done you know okay this kind of answer only you will get you should get then you will know you will get confidence and then you can play with the software software so examine and save the results so examination requires some expertise and save the results and in case if you need some revisions okay then you can do revisions means in the model itself if you need some change if you think that it is not perfect means you have to perfect that for which there is a no concept called grid independence test that if you know that because the discretization is based on the size of the grids if you make the grid size small and smaller you will get more perfection more perfections so if your grid size is very small you will get more perfection so you you can make a analysis with the varying the grid size so if you vary the grid size and if you are very satisfactorily okay this kind of uh, accuracy to this uh, sixth digit level okay this is okay then you can stop the analysis that means stop the modeling and uh, performing analysis then the repeated analysis you can vary the input parameters varying the pressure varying the input uh, inlet temperature all this vary and you can take several results so performing several results is it's conducting several real time experiment actually because you are varying just like that you vary vary the instruction vary the inlet pressure but if you want to do it experimentally it's it, it requires lot of money time everything but here computer will do it very easily so what i i what i understood recently people who start doing this kind of analysis using the software after this their knowledge level also enhances very appreciably because they do lot of real time experiments because of that they are all their understanding whatever they had during the school time and the college time everything they understood very clearly as if it is really done so the understanding level also will increase if you do repeated simulations if you do repeated simulations so in a software in a cfd software these are the major things pre processing where you need to create the geometry solid model mesh generation you need to provide the material properties and the boundary conditions now the computer is ready to execute the work now in the solver what it does all the all the physics is converted into some mathematical equations the whatever the solid geometry you give it knows what part of equations has to be taken to solve everything may people made as an inbuilt system in the software okay so then some uh, if there is no continuity mass momentum energy and equation of state and supporting models these are all so valid if there is a continuity in the variation of the dependent variable but if there is a discontinuity in the variation of the discontinuity variation of the dependent variable that has to be captured separately using physical models so that also you when you combine the computer knows what is the total equation to be considered then solver setting 
you will sometimes uh, different kind of solvers are evolved by the mathematicians so very simple solver is sufficient for a particular kind of problem for a particular kind of problem sometimes very complicated solving procedure are required to get more accuracy so solver settings is also important then post processor post processor is nothing but for your understanding also if you understand very well if you understood very well then you must be in a position to explain to the others right so your subordinates you need to explain this is the way it is working so you need to do your manufacturing engineers also you need to explain you are a design engineer you need to give input to your manufacturing engineers and if you are a sales person you can give the final drawing such a way you should convince your customers you are you should convince in your customers so all your post processing is the way you want the output you can generate and uh, whom you want to co convince accordingly you should make it for a for a uneducated person also you must be in a position to explain so then it should be a with a three dimensional animation also you can create and you can explain to them you can explain to them so in fact this uh, inside these only these equations are there in thermal design softwares that means a fluid flow and heat transfer analysis if you want to do only this equation is there this with this continuity equation then physical models are available so what is this equation you try to understand later because now i have no time to explain this equation this is the transient term this is the convection term this is the diffusion term and this is the source term this equation is given in a, a differential form this equation is given in integral form if you put one here for the dependent variable it will become continuity equation if you use u v and uh, w it will become momentum equation u momentum v momentum and w momentum equation x y z equations and if you use enthalpy it will become energy equation so only this equations how to change it as per your instruction computer can understand then the discretization also there are various concepts uh, how to discretize using the various concepts that is a separate topic so you should know this and these are the various steps involved consider any physical model you should ask these questions repeatedly when you make a, a simulation analysis a numerical analysis for any particular component so when you when you start asking questions only answer will come automatically you should one thing you should know answering is not uh, very difficult but asking correct question is very very difficult if if you get correct question from your teacher automatically your brain will work and your uh, your answer will come spontaneously human brain is so much powerful but asking correct question is only difficult somebody asks correct question automatically you can make the other person to learn understood so correct question you should ask repeatedly whether you are right whether the physical models are appropriate is the flow turbulent or uh, laminar is flow steady or unsteady whether compressibility effect ought to be considered or not for this problem whether 3d effect is required or only 2d is sufficient all these kinds of questions if you start asking answer will automatically emerge so asking question is very very important in this analysis so if you have this kind of uh, analysis then you can do wonders one thing you should know in the last 10 to 20 years lot of bright very intelligent engineers knowledge were made as an inbuilt inbuilt in the analysis software now if you do not know how to yeah, operate the software you are no way any engineers are no way useful for industry because old days some 20 years ago people all engineers they use their domain knowledge and analytical expressions whatever they have using that they have made the designs but now that will take a lot of time for the people that know the kind of salary whatever the engineers get the company the expectation is very much very high very much higher so to satisfy that requirement you should know how to operate this software how to make use of the software efficiently so that thousands of engineers bright right engineers knowledge which are inbuilt in the software you should bring back and uh, make use of that for the benefit of the industry then this output will be very faster and very useful and very accurate so you can do wonders using these softwares so there are different two kinds of software i told you component wise 
uh, that is detailed simulation, detailed analysis. Okay, I can say detailed analysis requires this kind of softwares like ANSYS, COMSOL, and uh, Fluent softwares, and the system simulation softwares. There are so many software for solar PV, PV SYST software is there, solar thermal, Trinsys software is there, Trinsys software. Like that, HVAC softwares, there are so many HVAC software, building simulation software, design builder software, building simulation. They are all called system simulation software, system simulation software. So as an engineer in your domain where you want to excel, if you have one, three knowledge, three levels you need to know, one modeling software you need to understand very exactly, very thoroughly, then one component wise, Analysis software, this is ANSI software or this kind of software. And also a system level simulation if you want to know where you are working. If you are working for some solar industry, then solar PV SYST simulation software or some thermal system simulation softwares are also available. There are so many softwares nowadays available for uh, the thermal system simulation, thermal system simulation. One powerful software which we use for energy engineers is Trinsys, not, tra, not uh, ANSYS, it is Trinsys system, transient system simulation software. That is very powerful software for uh, system simulation analysis, system simulation analysis. Now for building system, building energy analysis itself, there are some softwares which have come, which are called design builder software, energy plus is uh, base on the top of that for uh, energy analysis, the design builder software were evolved for all. This is very useful for architects and uh, architects and uh, mechanical civil engineers who are uh, involved in the building construction and also the mechanical engineers who are giving energy, uh, energy, low energy building, now green buildings, all these concepts are using this uh, design builder software. Design builder software, not only design builder, even for building analysis itself, there are several softwares uh, started coming. Okay, so you should know about what are the kinds of softwares available in your domain, then you can enhance your knowledge and also you will be very useful for this industry. Now with this, uh, I think the application of CFD, these are all very wide range of applications. For all engineering field, you can I can say this, this is very useful. And uh, some of the diagrams which he shows, where and all it can be used, aerodynamics, automobiles, uh, heat, uh, streamlines, workstations, ventilation for a uh, computer, workstation uh, cooling of computers and uh, ships, cooling towers, everywhere you can make use of this to optimize the system so that the energy requirement could be reduced appreciate. Okay, advantages of CFD, uh, already I have told you. So with this limitations, but still there are limitations that limitations knowing is also important because sometimes you are, uh, you are uh, understanding if there is a mistake, there is a mistake. Sometimes the computer simulation also will take long time means the computer node size requirement will be very, very small. Then only you can make the dynamic simulation with the time variant problem means the time required even with the powerful computer also will take seven days. But sometimes you can do the experiment within one day, but still it is expensive. But here with the computer, you can do it. But some of the large size system simulation requires even the computer will take one week time. So that, that kind of some uh, these limitations are also there in the system simulations. So the, those things also you should make use of that, but still whatever it be, there will be some error involved because numerical methods itself, it's an approximation, approximation. But nowadays with the powerful computers, that approximation is very, 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 very small so that it is approaching towards the exact solution, approaching towards the exact solution. So you need not bother about this numerical error as an limitations. Nowadays, these things are not there. Okay, with this, I will stop. Thank you for your attention. For all the audience, so initially there was a, uh, time delay uh, due to some my computer, my computer was not working, the speaker suddenly it was not working. Sorry for the delay. And uh, I thank once again for all the participants for the patient listening. I thank the organizers for the opportunity. Given. Thanks a lot.
Dr. Shafi. Thank you, sir. You have loaded yes. us valuable information. It's open to the public. You can unmute yes. your mic and ask questions if any. Yeah, participants, if you have any doubts or not two questions, I have time to answer. I think I have taken now only I'm seeing the time exceeded. So initially some five minutes to ten minutes I have wasted. Yes. Yeah. But participants. Any queries, please ask. Unmute yourself and ask the question. Okay, there are no queries. Okay. If there are no okay. Audience, participants, any questions? No, sirs. Hope there are no Thank you, sir. Thank you, delegates, for listening. I request Dr. Keith Nagaraji, Program Director, Institute of Automobile Engineering, to deliver the order. Sir, please. Why is this breaking, ma'am? Honorable Chancellor, Presiding Director, Madam, Principal, Vice Principal, Program Directors, HODs, Participants, and my dear colleagues and students. Good morning, everybody. It's my pleasure to thank vote of thanks on this occasion. An event like this cannot happen only. The wheels started rolling few months ago. I take this opportunity to thank our Honorable Chancellor, Dr. Yannam Virayan, for his Shower of blessings for this international conference, IC Dams 2020. I would like to express my sincere thanks to our respected director, madam, who is a great motivator and instrumental behind all our activities. Thank you, ma'am, for permitting us to conduct this international conference in a successful manner. I express my sincere thanks to our beloved principal and the dynamic vice principal for their wonderful guidance and support throughout the program. Thank you, sir. It is my pride to express my heartfelt thanks to Dr. Veldraj, Professor, Institute for Energy Studies, CEG Campus, Anna University, for his immediate acceptance to be the keynote speaker for this conference. Thank you, sir, for gracing this occasion and sharing your knowledge with us. Another keynote speaker, Professor Georgi Seskelai, King Abdullah University of Science and Technology from Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, who is going to deliver his keynote address in afternoon session. Thanks in advance, sir. It is my pleasure to thank Dr. Manju, Program Director, Institute of Mechanical Engineering for her valuable inputs. Also, I'm happy to thank all the Program Directors of all institutions, Associate Deans and the HODs of all departments, all participants from India and abroad. Last but not least, we are very much thankful to all our beloved faculties and the lovable students of SSE for their valuable contribution and their participation in this conference. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, so thank, uh, thank you, uh, thank you to Velraj, sir, for immediate, immediate acceptance and your uh, presentation is very nice, sir. Thank you for on behalf of the organizing uh, team of fourth IC Dance 2020, sir. Okay, welcome. I I take leave of you. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir.
Presentees kindly are requested to move on to the presentation room on Google Meet. The link has been already shared. Thank you all for your presence and participation. You are the very important part of the conference success. Thank you.